but 19 laps to go in this 10,000 metres. The laps have gone uh, a little unevenly, 76 to open with, and 78, 80, 80, 77, 76. Still over a 32-minute pace. And Hamrin has got about 20 metres lead, perhaps a little more, on Tikkanen of Finland, and Deakin, the favourite from Romania. She's followed by Panfil of Poland, Ulrich of East Germany, Kunar of Portugal, and it's Sarge, twice the world cross-country champion, is up there as well, who well, hasn't got much form over 10,000 metres, but could well produce something, because he's certainly got the background. That's right, to be twice world cross-country champion is a, is a pretty significant achievement, and if she can translate it over 10,000 metres, which there's no reason why she shouldn't, then she could be very competitive in this race. But it's, it's a kind of a no-no race here because Hamron has opened that gap and they're not doing anything about it. She's not pulling away any, but the chasing group aren't actually doing anything to, to try and close the gap. And I noticed when Gikan comes around that bottom bend there, the beginning of the straight, she spends all her time looking across at her coaches on the outside who are obviously shouting the split times. Well, I think they'll be telling her that there's nothing really happening in the race. You shouldn't be tired yet because the pace hasn't been excessive. She's fast in the later stages, so she obviously fancies her chances. And Ulrich moving up on the outside, well, she'll know about Gikan, and she's here to win this title. The last time she'll run for East Germany, the next time we'll see her will be in the, apparently, in the West German strip. They're not going to change their colours for next season, but, well, that's another matter. But, but Ulrich there, moving up on the outside, she won the Europa Cup at Gateshead in a great race with Angie, Angie Payne, as she was then, Angie Hulley now. Um, and I, th I think she's going to be very competitive. Still, the gap remains the same, about 20 to 25 metres. Tikkanen and Geekin together. Holrick right there, Kuna there. Going back through the field. Uh, Jill Hunter of Great Britain is in uh, sixth place. About 10-11 uh, is Julie Holland. Angie Payne not quite in the shot. Uh, must get used to calling her by a recent uh, married name, Angie Holly. There she is. The last three laps have been a bit more even, 77, 76, 77. It's been a very hot day indeed, probably the hottest day in the sunshine uh, of any day of the championship so far. But it, uh, earlier in the day it wasn't so humid, but I feel the humidity is uh, building up in the evening. Well, I, I think that's right. And the other thing is that when they were talking about the conditions, they were talking with some concern about the humidity this morning when they were considering the race tonight and uh, that maybe is why, why the pace has been slower but let's not forget it's a, it's a championship race there's no prizes for times there's prizes for positions and when the men's races become tactical we tend to just assume that that's how they should be so I think this is probably the same circumstances we should apply to the women's race Lastly, to impress me the other day on the uh, European circuit is Dandolo, 344 from Italy. When she produced a personal best performance of 3,000 metres of 844, and she's right in there now, just on the edge of the picture, 344. She's very much in touch. Coach is watching uh, with great concern. Kunha running wide all the way. 362. Fine marathon runner fourth in the last European 10,000 metre championship. And really the bunch hasn't been split very much. Hammerin, the leader, is now 33. Having won the Stockholm Marathon, as Brendan said uh, earlier this season, and just looking back on our marathon record, uh, she's well, she was uh, 18th in the Olympic marathon in 1984 and 14th in this race four, four years ago. And in fact, she became a mother uh, during the past 12 months and has just returned to running. Well, 15 laps to go and the race really hasn't started yet. And that chasing group, that second group, is where I think the winner's going to come from. It's, I mean, that's not much of a gamble because all the stars are there. These are good cross-country runners, they're good road runners, there's some excellent track 3,000 metre runners. And as the laps unfold, so the favouritism starts to swing towards the shorter distance runners. 
rather than the marathon runners. Mide Hamran there, I'm not sure she's trying to win the race, I'm sure she's only trying to get a good time, but as the laps go on, somebody in that chasing group's got to do something about it, and Gikan is sticking religiously to the plan that's been set earlier. She looks across, she's re receiving her instructions, and she isn't making a move. Ulrich on the outside, looks to be concerned about that gap, keeps moving out to the outside and looking down the track and they'll be conscious because Hamron is a good class marathon runner, good class distance runner so they shouldn't let that gap grow too large and someone in that chasing group is certainly going to have to do something about it but I think the race will start to unfold when they reach the 5,000 meter point the, the coaches will have said get the first 5,000 meters out of the way and then start thinking about your plan over the last 12 and a half laps the lead is now seven seconds. We haven't mentioned much about the three Russians in this. Well, we have mentioned Romanova, who's the silver medalist at 3,000 metres. She has to be a real threat in this, wearing 4-1-1. But the other two are there as well. Galia Mova, who's done 32-49. Not spectacular this year, but obviously potentially very good. And Tolstoy Gazova, who's now 28. 32-06 is her best time. Fourth in the Goodwill Games. And all of the three Soviet athletes are still right there. And Gikan's decided that she's going to do something about it now. That gap's grown too, too wide for comfort. And I was beginning to wonder whether if uh, Hamran could just push on for a few more laps, she might actually get away from the field. But they, I think they've become conscious of that. As Gikan moves, so did Ulrich in second, third place behind her. And then Panfil, Poland. And then Jill Hunter moved too. And Anat Sarjan of France and Dandolo of Italy. So the names that we expected to be up there, they're all up there, but there's still that gap and they still don't seem to be doing too much about it. The gap is probably about 30 to 35 metres now. Hammer looking very relaxed. Deacon now in charge of the pack. Ulrich follows, Dandolo there. Panfil of Poland. Sarja of France. Uh, Jill Hunter of Great Britain. The order there is Deacon, Ulrich, Panfil, Dandolo, Hunter, Sarja, and then Romanova. This time as they come round, they've got 13 laps to go, approaching the halfway stage. And surely somebody from halfway onwards has got to switch on. Geekin second, Ulrich third, Panfield four, Dandolo five, Hunter six, Sargent seven. Romanova in eighth place. In ninth place is Slagers of Belgium. This is uh, very much uh, a Scandinavian dominated event thanks to Ingrid Christensen, who is the world record holder and also the reigning champion. And just to remind you, Ingrid missing this race, she's having a baby. Well, Hamron looks strong, she's a good marathon runner. They go through five, she goes through 5,000 metres in 16 minutes and three seconds. Well, that would bring them home in 32, over 32 minutes. And I think this race should be a little bit faster than that. We're looking for under 32 minutes as a finishing time. But she'll be happy with her running now. She's into her running, she's free of danger. And it's seriously just a case of her keeping applying the pressure. That's the signal for Victoria Gikan. She's a hot favourite for the, the Romanians. And she's got this race to win, though. Catherine Ulrich behind her, Panfil of Poland, and I thought she might take it out earlier, you know, with the strength of the marathon runner that she is. Dandolo, the Italian, who looked very good in, in Zurich. And then Annette Sargent of France, and then Jill Hunter, and then Romanova, Slegers of Belgium, and, and Aurora Kuna, Julie Holland, just on the back of that group, having a good run. And then down the field, and maybe a little bit surprisingly to me, is Angie Hulley. I thought she would be a bit more competitive than this at this particular pace, but she's, she's just got to keep going in the second half of the race. There's a good time on for some of the people further down the, down the field. Gradually, they are cutting the gap back. Geekin's doing the work in order to get there. Ulrich's just sitting and waiting. Panfield, the London Marathon winner from Poland in fourth place. Fifth is Dandolo, sixth is Sargent of France, seventh is Hunter of Great Britain, eighth is Slagers of Belgium. In ninth place, Romanova of the Soviet Union, just behind her, her teammate, Galia Mova, and then Kuna of Portugal, and they've got a slight gap then on the next Russian, who's Tolsto Gazova, who's some, uh, what, 10 metres behind the leading group. And that leading group, some uh, now probably 25 metres behind the... Uh, 
the front running Swede. And she's been allowed to knock out even pace laps, which is the most economical way of running. She's running at a very, very even pace. I mean, our last few laps have gone 77, 77, 76, 77, 76, 76, 76, 76. That's the conservative way to run, economical, saves your strength, and nobody's doing too much about it. Well, dare I ask the question, could she win it? You know, she's strong, she's out there, she's got that gap, and Gikan isn't doing very much about it, pulling the group back. It would be a gamble, it would be an amazing result if she could win it, because Ulrich, Dandolo, Aurora Kunha, Annette Sarjon, Jill Hunter, well, I think they're better athletes than Midi Hamron, but she's got the winning, she's got what well, could be a winning lead. I wouldn't suggest that she will win the race because they're going to have to start, but they're going to have to start accelerating. She looks strong. Her marathon background, her recent w result in the Stockholm Marathon, well, if this was a men's race, you would you'd be able to say that the gap would be closed over the course of about three laps, but Gikan's probably not been in this position before. She's not been that experienced at 10,000 metres, but they're going to have to do something about it. She's coming up with 10 laps to go. Kunha moving up on the outside. They decided they're all gathering and nobody's going to set the pace. And that's the way you could lose it. And Dandolo decides, I'm not going to wait any longer. That's the business. Ten laps to go. They run training times on the track over ten laps. So ten laps to go. You can go for home from here. That was smack on 76 again. Beautifully even pace running by the leader. But the rest seem to be afraid of each other. Dandolo second. Panfield third. Beacon four. Ulrich five, Slager six, in seventh place is Sarjan, Jill Hunter eighth, ninth is Romanova, tenth is uh, Gariamova, and in eleventh place now Kuna, and these eleven are away uh, from the rest by some ten metres. I think there's an element of fear there. Well, I think they feel as a safety in numbers because all the big names are in this group, and when they look around, they'll know that. But I think they're going to have to do something about it because, as an as an athlete, you know, you come down the finishing straight here, you look at the clock, and suddenly it goes from ten to single figures. With nine laps to go, she approaches, and that is psychologically a, a real boost because it's awful when you come down the track and you see seventeen laps to go and you're already tired. But uh, Hamron running well here, Dandolo ch chasing the pace, and then she begins to look around. They're going to have to start working together to try and close that gap. They're looking up at the scoreboard, which gives you an indication of what's going on behind you. Well, you're not going to do anything from behind. You're going to have to do something in front, because that gap with nine and three-quarter laps to go, well, I, I can't see Hamron winning this race, but they're going to have to run to do it. 77 laps, so she's still keeping that even pace flowing. The only way they're going to get back is when they start racing in the last three or four laps, by the look of it, unless somebody makes a break from the bunch. She's now leading by eight seconds. But there's a, there's a double problem for this group. There's A, chasing Hamron, who's got that lead there, and then the other one is, the other is their own tactics on their own run-in. So they're actually trying to race against one another, but they've got this disconcerting problem with an athlete who they didn't expect to be that competitive, being that far ahead, so they've got to close the gap and then they've got to race. So whose nerves are going to last the longest? Who's convinced in that group that they're going to close the gap anyway? And that's the question. And they're coming up with eight laps to go. And I think Jill Hunter, if she's feeling strong enough, would be considering a move herself. She's running well. You can't tell how she feels from here, but she doesn't look to be too hot. She doesn't look to be too concerned. And uh, her plan would have to be going from a long way out. But has she got the confidence? Because when she looks around her, she sees world-class runners, cross-country runners of world-class like Annette Sarjan, track runners of world-class like Katrin Ulrich and Dan Dolo of, of Italy, and marathon runners of world-class like Wanda Panfil and Aurora Kunha. So there's, there's a great field there, there's a great collection, and if Hamron doesn't start slowing of her own accord, which she shows no sign of doing, that race is going to have to be fantastically fast. If it was three laps to go, I'd be getting a bit concerned on behalf of the chasing group. Instead of that, it's seven and a half, but the gap remains the same at eight seconds at the moment. Well, somebody was just saying uh, she's doing an Antibo. Well, she's not really that good. You, you would expect her to be caught, but unless they get to work... A 
the lap counters have got a problem now because they're showing eight to go at the moment to some lap runners and she's just lapping another one there it's got to go to seven for her and indeed it has done we'll just take uh, the time gap again in a minute uh, Dan Dodo in second place, third is Ulrich, four Panfil, in fifth place Romanova, six is Sarjar, seven is Slagers, eight is Geekin, and nine is Gadia Moba, ten is Jill Hunter, who has tripped uh, a lap and a half back very slightly, and in eleventh place Kunar. The race now between these eleven, and it's still the same at eight seconds. Well, if you look at her marathon background, I don't think she's going to slow. It's going to be the chasing group that has to speed up. And three laps, you know, over the last three laps, that's possible. But if they don't start getting into their running now, then we could have a real upset. As we say that, Dandolo begins to stretch the group. She, they, they come around into the top bend and they're all looking at the screen, but particularly Hamron, because that, the screen is the best information she's going to get. Now, I wonder if she's deciding, can I press on? can I win the race because I don't think she expected to find herself in this position coming up with six laps to go well I'll tell you I know where I'd rather be if I was in a race like this in my day I'd be I'd rather be where Hamron was I wonder if she can find some lift now to be in this position she looks quite relaxed and happy incidentally news of Julie Holland she's in 13th place and Angie Hulley is uh, 17th she's got a time gap again Dandolo in second place, Sarjan, her, the former world cross-country champion, twice world cross-country champion, has decided surely to do something about it. And the gap, in fact, has gone up to nine seconds. Sarjan now in charge. And that's Sarjan, her best time, uh, 32.04, set uh, two years ago. She was 19th in the Olympic uh, 10,000 metres, but she really ought to be better than that. World Cross Country Champion in 1987 and 89, and third in 1986 and 1988. Five times the fresh cross country champion. And she's really got to gradually build up the pace if they're going to make any sort of contact with the Swede. Just behind her, Ulrich, who's followed the leader in that chasing pack all the time. Then Panfil of Poland, Romanova of the Soviet Union, Dandolo of Italy. Galia Mova of the Soviet Union, Slagers, Jill Hunter of Great Britain, and Kunar of Portugal. Well, she's well composed, isn't she? She's taking a look off at the monitor. She sees exactly what's going on. And the laps are still coming consistently at 76 and 77. The gap, eight and a half seconds. Five laps to go, less than five for the leader. About uh, four and three quarters. And still no sign of the gap being closed. Well, this is a fascinating race. Hamron still looking strong, still hopefully composing herself and gathering her confidence because the chasing group are beginning to close a little but they're not closing excessively and they do look to be in trouble some the conditions here are probably paying you know they're paying the price Jill Hunter at the back of that group doesn't look to be in total control and just as they ease Jill just drifts off the back I'd rather see her in the middle of that pack rather than on the end of that loose piece of string that ties you to the leader because when it goes it, it can go completely Sleggers of Belgium just in front of Jill and then Dandolo, Panfil, Annette Sarjan. Well, Annette Sarjan's going to have to lead a charge. Romanova, feeling stronger, obviously, but not doing anything about it. And Gikan went completely there. I mean, she's way down the track, and she was one of the favourites. There she is, way behind. Very slowly they're closing. It's just over seven and a half seconds then, but they're not closing fast enough. Mini Hammer in came into the rest of the race with the best time of 31 minutes 57.15. Just checking on the rankings, that would have put her number six in Europe before the race started. She's run like she believes she's number one from the start. Well, there's a group of four now, and they're beginning to chase. Annette Sarjan, Romanova, Katrin Ulrich, who always looks tired and yet can produce some great finishes, and then Panfil, who won the London Marathon this year. And they are beginning to gather now. 
We're coming up with three, just over three laps to go, and the race is on now. Hamrin has run a brave race out in front. She believes, begin to believe in herself. She's got that lead. She's checking the scoreboard. She surprised us all with her tactics. And I would have said the medals were going to come from this four, but maybe I'm wrong. Well, Hammering certainly deserves something out of this, but I wonder. We'll give you the time gap, and it looks to be closing quite markedly now. That's uh, 6.9 seconds, the gap. So they are cutting it back, but have they left it too late? Under three laps left. Sarjo in second place. Romanova third. Dandero of Italy four. Panfil five of Poland. Then a gap for Galliamova of the Soviet Union. Slagers and uh, Jill Hunter back in eighth place now. Well, Sarjo is having to do the work to get them there. Look at 441 Romanova, who's the silver medalist in the 3,000 metres. She's hurting. <laughs> Dandola's in trouble now. She's really going rapidly backwards. Cameron. Uh, Getting inside the lap runner. Two laps to go. Can she hang on? And doesn't she deserve it? And Romanova has taken up the chase with Ulrich in second place and third place now. Sarja four, Panfil five. And the medals between those five. 6.3 the gap. Well, we saw Romanova in the, in the 3,000 metres. We know she can finish. We've seen Katrin Ulrich and over good 10,000 metre races. We know she can finish. And if they begin to race each other, I believe they can close down the gap. And Anat Sarjan believes she can go with them too. And they're closing down the back straight. Romanova is trying to pull away from Ulrich, and the race is going to be between those two. <coughs> and poor Hamrin realises now she's caught a glimpse of them chasing her, and they are now within striking distance. But surely, surely, there isn't anyone in this stadium who wishes to see her lose a medal. But it looks to me as if she may well lose out altogether. Hamrin now about to be caught, and they've caught her very quickly. Romanova now takes the lead. In second place is Ulrich. In third place, Annette Sarja, who hits the tiring Hamrin, who's in fourth place, looks round to see if there's anybody else to threaten, and there really isn't. There's the bell, 30, point, 30 minutes 43 of the bell, nothing spectacular. Indeed, when Christensen won this championship, she'd already finished. Romanova, the silver in the 3,000, chasing gold now in the 10,000. Ulrich still digging in in second place. Ulrich, a fine athlete. East German, only 23, but with a vast amount of experience. Sarjan looks back. Hamrin can't make any impression at all on the third place position. And it's uh, Romanova being chased by Ulrich for the smaller Soviet athlete. Is renowned for a kick, but she's tiring a little bit. And here comes Ulrich on the outside. Ulrich suddenly finds the speed she needs. Is Romanova relegated to silver for a second time? Or can she strike again? Ulrich has tempted Romanova to come back. And the Soviet silver medalist in the 3,000 metres gets gold at 10,000. Ulrich takes the silver, and Annette Sargent of France with the bronze. But the cheers are for this lady, Midi Hamrin of Sweden. She gets a bigger cheer than the winner. Dandolo, Dandolo Italy in fifth place. In sixth place, the Russian Galliamova. Seventh was Panfil, and Jill Hunter in eighth place for Great Britain. In ninth place, Cunard of Portugal, and checking back down the field, uh, I can see Julie Holland at about 15th place and Angie Payne some way back on that. The last lap by Romanova was 64 seconds. The winning time, 31 minutes, 46.85. So, it's gold for the Soviet Union, silver to East Germany, bronze to France, and only sympathy and admiration for the Swedish girl. 
Julie Holland just finishing there and we'll have to wait a little while here's Angie Holly coming in the finishing straight just being passed but putting on a battle but what a race that was that was an exciting race because there were times when we thought that Hamrin would win it and there were times when we thought the chasing group would catch her but, but it was the one who was prepared to wait long enough Romanova and Ulrich Angie Holly there She'll probably be a little bit disappointed, but she's done her running tonight. Well, she chose the 10,000 metres, Angie, rather than the marathon, and that was probably a good decision. <laughs>